In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Peace be with you. And with your spirit. Dear brothers and sisters, on this most sacred night in which our Lord Jesus Christ passed over from death to life, the Church calls upon her sons and daughters scattered throughout the world to come together to watch and pray. If we keep the memorial of the Lord's Paschal Solemnity in this way, listening to his word and celebrating his mysteries, then we shall have the sure hope of sharing his triumph over death and living with him in God. Let us pray. O oh God, who through your Son bestowed upon the faithful the fire of your glory, sanctify this new fire, we pray, and grant that by these Paschal celebrations we may be so inflamed with heavenly desires that with minds made pure we may attain the festivity of uniting splendor through Christ our Lord. Christ yesterday and today, the beginning and the end, the Alpha and the Omega. All time belongs to him and all the ages to him be glory and power through every age and forever. Amen. By his holy and glorious wound, May Christ the Lord guard us and protect us. Amen. May the light of Christ rising in glory dispel the darkness of our hearts and minds. The light of Christ. Christ be to God. Lord, at a song, led like a lamb, sacrificed like a sheep, buried as a
light of Christ. Thanks be 
the light of Christ. Thanks be to God. Let us receive the Lord, and we shall receive God. Let us receive the Lord, and become disciples of be in your heart and on your lips, that you may proclaim his paschal praise worthily and well, in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit.
Exult, let them exult, the hosts of heaven. Exult, let angel ministers of God exult. Let the trumpet of salvation sound aloud our mighty King's triumph. Be glad, let earth be glad, as glory floods her, ablaze with light from her eternal King. Let all corners of the earth be glad, knowing an end to gloom and darkness. Rejoice, let Mother Church also rejoice, arrayed with the lightning of his glory. Let this holy building shake with joy, filled with the mighty voices of the peoples. Therefore, dearest friends, standing in the awesome glory of this holy light. Invoke with me, I ask you, the mercy of God Almighty, that he who has been pleased to number me, though unworthy, among the Levites, may pour into me his light unshadowed, that I may sing this candle's perfect praises. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, with ardent love of mind and heart, and with devoted service of our voice, to acclaim our God invisible, the Almighty Father, and Jesus Christ our Lord, his Son, his only begotten, who for our sake paid Adam's debt to the Eternal Father, and pouring out his own dear blood, Wipe clean the record of our ancient sinfulness. These then are the feasts of Passover, in which is slain the Lamb, the one true Lamb, whose blood anoints the doorposts of believers. This is the night when once you led our forebears, Israel's children, from slavery in Egypt and made them pass dry shod through the Red Sea. This is the night that with a pillar of fire banish the darkness of sin. This is the night that even now throughout the world sets Christian believers apart from worldly vices and from the gloom of sin, leading them to grace and joining them to his holy ones. 
This is the night when Christ broke the prison bars of death and rose victorious from the underworld. Our birth would have been no gain had we not been redeemed. O oh, wonder of your humble care for us, O oh, love, O oh, charity beyond all telling, to ransom a slave, you gave away your son. O truly necessary sin of Adam, destroyed completely by the death of Christ. O happy fault that earned so great, so glorious a Redeemer. O oh, 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 truly blessed night, worthy alone to know the time and hour when Christ rose from the underworld. This is the night of which it is written, the night shall be as bright as day, Dazzling is the night for me, and full of gladness. The sanctifying power of this night dispels wickedness, washes faults away, restores innocence to the fallen, and joy to mourners, drives out hatred, fosters concord, and brings down the mighty. On this your night of grace, O Holy Father, accept this candle, a solemn offering the work of bees and of your servants' hands, an evening sacrifice of praise, this gift from your most holy church. But now we know the praises of this pillar, which glowing fire ignites for God's honor. A fire into many flames divided, yet never dimmed by sharing of its light. For it is fed by melting wax, drawn out by mother bees, to build a torch so precious. O oh, truly blessed night, when things of heaven are wed to those of earth and divine to the human. Therefore, O oh Lord, we pray you that this candle, hallowed to the honor of your name, may persevere undimmed to overcome the darkness of this night. Receive it as a pleasing fragrance and let it mingle with the lights of heaven. May this flame be found still burning by the morning star, the one morning star who never sets, Christ your Son, who coming back from death's domain has shed his peaceful light on humanity 
and lives and reigns forever and ever. Dear brothers and sisters, now that we have begun our solemn vigil, let us listen with quiet hearts to the word of God. Let us meditate on how God in times past saved his people. And in these, the last days, has sent us his Son as our Redeemer. Let us pray that our God may complete this Paschal work of salvation by the fullness of redemption. A reading from the book of Genesis. In the beginning, when God created the heavens and the earth, the earth was a formless wasteland and darkness covered the abyss while a mighty wind swept over the waters. Then God said, let there be light and there was light. God saw how good the light was. God then separated the light from the darkness. God called the light day, and the darkness he called night. Thus, evening came and morning followed the first day. Then God said, let there be a dome in the middle of the waters to separate one body of water from the other. And so it happened. God made the dome, and it separated the water above the dome from the water below it. God called the dome the sky. Evening came, and morning followed the second day. Then God said, let the water under the sky be gathered into a single basin so that the dry land may appear. And so it happened. The water under the sky was gathered into its basin and the dry land appeared. God called the dry land the earth, and the basin of the water he called the sea. God saw how good it was. Then God said, let the earth bring forth vegetation, every kind of plant that bears seed, and every kind of fruit tree on earth that bears fruit with its seed in it. And so it happened. 
the earth brought forth every kind of plant that bears seed and every kind of fruit tree on earth that bears fruit with seed in it. God saw how good it was. Evening came and morning followed the third day. Then God said, let there be lights in the dome of the sky to separate day from night. Let them mark the fixed times, the days and the years, and serve as luminaries in the domes of the sky to shed light upon the earth. And so it happened. God made the two great lights, the greater one to govern the day, the lesser one to govern the night. And he made the stars. God set them in the dome of the sky to shed light upon the earth, to govern the day and the night, and to separate the light from the darkness. God saw how good it was. Evening came and morning followed the fourth day. Then God said, let the water teem with an abundance of living creatures and on the earth let birds fly beneath the dome of the sky. And so it happened. God created the great sea monsters and all kinds of swimming creatures with which the water teems and all kinds of winged birds. God saw how good it was and God blessed them saying, be fertile, multiply, and fill the water of the seas. Let the birds multiply on the earth. Evening came and morning followed the fifth day. Then God said, let the earth bring forth all kinds of living creatures, cattle, and creeping things and wild birds of all kinds. And so it happened. God made all kinds of wild animals, all kinds of cattle and all kinds of creeping things of the earth. God saw how good it was. Then God said, let us make man in our image after our likeness. Let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, the birds of the air and the cattle and over all the wild animals and all the creatures that crawl on the ground. God created man in his image. In the image of God, he created him. Male and female, he created them. God blessed them saying, be fertile and multiply. Fill the earth and subdue it. Have dominion over the fish of the sea the birds of the air, and all the living things that move on the earth. God also said, See, I give you every seed-bearing plant all over the earth, and every tree that has seed-bearing fruit on it to be your food. And to all the animals of the land, all the birds of the air, all the living creatures that crawl on the ground. I give all the green plants for food. And so 
it happened. God looked at everything he had made and he found it very good. Evening came and morning followed the sixth day. Thus, the heavens and the earth and all their array were completed. Since on the seventh day, God was finished with the work he had been doing, he rested on the seventh day from all the work he had undertaken. The word of the Lord. Send out your spirit and renew the face of the earth. Lord, send out your spirit and renew the face of the earth. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul, Lord God, how great. the earth on its base to stand firm from age to age. You wrapped it with the ocean like a cloth. The waters stood higher than the mountains. Lord, send out your spirit Springs gush forth in valleys, they flow in between the hills. drinks its fill of your gift. You make the grass grow for the cattle and the plants to serve and sleep. Lord, send out your spirit O Lord, in wisdom you have made them all. The earth is full of your riches. Bless the Lord. Speak. 
Let us pray. Almighty, ever-living God, who are wonderful in the ordering of all your works, may those you have redeemed understand that there exists nothing more marvelous than the world's creation in the beginning, except that at the end of the ages, Christ, our Passover, has been sacrificed, who lives and reigns forever and ever. A reading from the book of Genesis. God put Adam to the test. He called to him, Abraham. Here I am, he replied. Then God said, take your son Isaac, your only one, whom you love, and go to the land of Moriah. There you shall offer him up as a holocaust on a height that I will point out to you. Early the next morning, Abraham saddled his donkey, took with him his son Isaac and two of his servants as well, and with the wood that he had cut for the holocaust, set out for the place of which God had told him. On the third day, Abraham got sight of the place from afar. Then he said to his servants, both of you stay here with the donkey while the boy and I go on over yonder. We will worship and then come back to you. Thereupon Abraham took the wood for the Holocaust and laid it on his son Isaac's shoulders while he himself carried the fire and the knife. As the two walked on together, Isaac spoke to his father, Abraham. Father, Isaac said. Yes, son, he replied. Isaac continued, here are the fire and the wood, but where is the sheep for the Holocaust? Son, Abraham answered, God himself will provide the sheep for the Holocaust. Then the two continued going forward. When they came to the place of which God had told him, Abraham built an altar there and arranged the wood on it. Next, he tied up his son Isaac and put him on top of the wood on the altar. Then he reached out and took the knife to slaughter his son. But the Lord's messenger called to him from heaven, Abraham, Abraham. Here I am, he answered. Do not lay your hand on the boy, said the messenger. Do not do the least to him. I know now how devoted you are to God, since you did not withhold from me your own beloved son. As Abraham looked about, he spied a ram caught by its horns in the thicket. So he went and took the ram and offered it up as a holocaust in place of his son. Abraham named the site Yahweh Yere. Hence, people now say, on the mountain, the Lord will see. Again, the Lord's messenger called to Abraham from heaven and said, I swear by myself, declares the Lord, that because you acted as you did in not withholding from me your beloved son, 
I will bless you abundantly and make your descendants as countless as the stars of the sky and the sands of the seashore. Your descendants shall take possession of the gates of their enemies, and in your descendants all the nations of the earth shall find blessing. All this because you obeyed my command. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. rejoices, my soul is glad, even my body shall rest in safety. of joy in your presence. As your right hand hath been restored, you are my inheritance, O Let us pray. O God, Supreme Father of the faithful, who increased the children of your promise by pouring out the grace of adoption throughout the whole world, and who, through the Paschal mystery, make your servant Abraham father of the nations, as once you swore, grant, we pray, that your peoples may enter worthily into the grace to which you call them, through Christ our Lord.
A reading from the book of Exodus. The Lord said to Moses, why are you crying out to me? Tell the Israelites to go forward, and you lift up your staff and with hand outstretched over the sea, split the sea in two, that the Israelites may pass through it on dry land. But I will make the Egyptians so obstinate that they will go in after them. Then I will receive glory through Pharaoh and all his army, his chariots and charioteers. The Egyptians shall know that I am the Lord when I receive glory through Pharaoh and his chariots and charioteers. The angel of God who had been leading Israel's camp now moved and went around behind them. The column of smoke also leaving the front took up its place between them so that it came between the camp of the Egyptians and that of Israel. But the cloud now became dark and thus the night passed without the rival camps coming any closer together all night long. Then Moses stretched out his hand over the sea, and the Lord swept the sea with a strong east wind throughout the night, and so turned it into dry land. When the water was thus divided, the Israelites marched into the midst of the sea on dry land, with the water like a wall to their right and to their left. The Egyptians followed in pursuit, all Pharaoh's horses and chariots and charioteers went after them right into the midst of the sea. In the night watch, just before dawn, the Lord cast through the column of the fiery cloud upon the Egyptian force a glance that threw it into a panic, and he so clogged their chariot wheels that they could hardly drive. With that, the Egyptians sounded the retreat before Israel because the Lord was fighting for them against the Egyptians. Then the Lord told Moses, stretch out your hand over the sea, that the water may flow back upon the Egyptians, upon their chariots and their charioteers. So Moses stretched out his hand over the sea, and at dawn the sea flowed back to its normal depth. The Egyptians were fleeing head on toward the sea when the Lord hurled them into its mist. As the water flowed back, it covered the chariots and the charioteers of Pharaoh's whole army, which had followed the Israelites into the sea. Not a single one of them escaped. But the Israelites had marched on dry land through the midst of the sea with the water like a wall to their right and to their left. Thus, the Lord saved Israel on that day from the power of the Egyptians. When Israel saw the Egyptians lying dead on the seashore and beheld the great power that the Lord had shown against the Egyptians, they feared the Lord and believed in him and in his servant, Moses. Then Moses and the Israelites sang this song to the Lord. I will sing to the Lord for he is gloriously triumphant, horse and chariot he has cast into the sea. The word of the Lord.
Let us sing to the Lord. He has clothed himself in glory. Let us sing to the Lord. He has clothed himself in glory. I will sing to the Lord. Glorious his triumph. Horse and rider has he thrown into the sea. is my God, and I extol him, my Father's God, and I give him praise. The Lord is a warrior, the Lord is his name. Let us see. chariots of Pharaoh he buried in the sea. The flower of his army is hurled into the sea. in its power. Your right hand, Lord, has shattered the enemy. The people, the people who have redeemed us are. Let us see. plant them on your holy mountain, the place, O Lord, where you have made your home. The Lord will reign forever and ever. Let us sing to the Lord. He has glory. Let us pray. O God, whose ancient wonders remain undeemed in splendor, even in our day, for what you once bestowed on a single people, freeing them from Pharaoh's persecution, by the power of your right hand, now you bring about as the salvation of the nations. Through the waters of rebirth, grant, we pray, that the whole world may become children of Abraham and inherit the dignity of Israel's birthright. Through Christ our Lord.
Let us pray. O oh God, who make this most sacred night radiant with the glory of the Lord's resurrection, stir up in your church a spirit of adoption, so that renewed in body and mind, we may render you undivided service. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Brothers and sisters, are you unaware that we who were baptized into Christ Jesus were baptized into his death? We were indeed buried with him through baptism into death, so that just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, we too might live in newness of life. For if we have grown into union with him through a death like his, we shall also be united with him in the resurrection. We know that our old self was crucified with him so that our sinful body might be done away with that we might no longer be in slavery to sin. For a dead person has been absolved from sin. If then we have died with Christ, we believe that we shall also live with him. We know that Christ, raised from the dead, dies no more. Death no longer has power over him. As to his death, he died to sin once and for all. As to his life, he lives for God. Consequently, you too must think of yourselves as being dead to sin and living for God in Christ Jesus. The word of the Lord. Most Reverend Father, I bring you a message of great joy, the message of Alleluia.
The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory to you, Lord. At daybreak on the first day of the week, the women who had come from Galilee with Jesus took the spices they had prepared and went to the tomb. They found the stone rolled away from the tomb, but when they entered, they did not find the body of the Lord Jesus. While they were puzzling over this, behold, two men in dazzling garments appeared to them. They were terrified and bowed their faces to the ground. They said to them, why do you seek the living one among the dead? He is not here, but he has been raised. Remember what he had said to you while he was still in Galilee, that the son of man must be handed over to sinners and be crucified and rise on the third day. And they remembered his words. Then they returned from the tomb and announced all these things to the 11 and to all the others. The women were Mary Magdalene, Joanna, and Mary, the mother of James. The others who accompanied them also told this to the apostles, but their story seemed like nonsense and they did not believe them. But Peter got up and ran to the tomb, bent down, and saw the burial cloths alone. Then he went home amazed at what happened. The Gospel of the Lord. My dear friends in Christ, this evening we celebrate the greatest feast of victory in history. We celebrate the ultimate conquest of evil, the triumph of love, the reason of our hope and the definitive statement that God does not leave us in darkness and fear. He is victorious over sin and death. He is alive. He is risen. To all present in this national shrine of the Immaculate Conception and to those who are spiritually united with us through the television network, especially those who are homebound or alone, may the peace of the risen Lord be with you. As the Apostolic Nuncio, the Holy Father's personal representative in this country, I wish to express his spiritual closeness and his affection for you as precious members of the flock. We began this sacred liturgy with the blessing of the Easter fire and the chanting of the exalted, which is marked by a striking, a jarring phrase. 
o Happy Fold, o Felix Culpa. How can the words happy and fold be juxtaposed? To propose an answer, we must look at things from God's point of view as best as we are able. Our Old Testament readings began with the creation story and God saw all that he had made and declared it good. And with the creation of man and woman, he declared his creation very good. The sin of, of our first parents had dear consequences for all of humanity. How could it be called happy? After all, God's perfect plan of creation was now marred. It is as if someone had randomly thrown paint on a masterpiece. What would be a suitable remedy? Imagine you had a priceless vase from the Ming dynasty and someone dropped it. Perhaps with the help of some experts, it could be restored, but it will never be perfectly whole again. Again, imagine if you had a friend who told you something very important in confidence. And then you told someone else and it damaged the person's reputation. Could you ever undo the damage done? It seems impossible. On the surface, the sin of Adam seems to have done irreparable harm to humanity. Yet, God, the divine artist, undertook the task of finding a remedy for the sin to restore the beauty of his creation. But he did so in a way that took into account both our human nature and the nature of the fault, which was not so happy. The story of salvation history, which we heard in the Old Testament readings today, speak to the drama of this restoration. A restoration which involved all the drama of a love story. Although we did not hear the story of the great flood with Noah, God began his plan of restoration which continue in earnest with the Abraham who God asked in a seemingly incomprehensible way to sacrifice his only son Isaac. Why would God ask this of him? He wanted to measure how far Abraham was ready to go in faith and in trust. And Abraham believed. That makes the difference. He believed. Against hope and logic that God would provide. This is the beginning of the restoration. Abraham believed, even when he did not understand perfectly. And this is part of the love story between God and humanity. Abraham loved God so much that he was willing to sacrifice his only son. And God blessed Abraham, saying, because you acted as you did in not withholding for me your beloved son, I will bless you abundantly and make your descendants countless as the stars of the sky and the sands of the seashore. 
the love story between God and humanity continued during the Exodus from Egypt. God heard the cries of his own people who were sorely oppressed, and we heard of his wonderful liberation of them through the strong hand of Moses and their crossing of the Red Sea. The Canticon, which followed their deliverance, contained this verse. Listen. My strength and my courage is the Lord. Not myself, the Lord. And he has been my savior. Again, this makes the difference. He is my God. I praise him. The God of my father, I extol him. God showed his love for his people, not only in delivering them, but in choosing them to be his own. He would be faithful to them and would work with them in bringing about his plan of salvation. Even if their relationships at times would be strained, as it happens also in our relationships. When we discover through the readings, what we discover through the reading is that God is never far from his people. Salvation history sheds light on our present situation. God is not far away. Even if at times we think that he's very far away. He acts so that we may be conscious of our evil and may ask him to deliver us. The mystery of love is also the mystery of salvation. God intervenes in the life of those whom he loves, giving himself and leading them to victory and freedom. The sin of Adam, the fault, prompted an act of love, an act of infinite mercy in the sending of our Redeemer, who was prophesied through Abraham to Moses to the King David and to all the prophets. In his story, the Redeemer would be born in the flesh of the Virgin Mary, would be crucified under Pontius Pilate, who died and be buried and would rise again. A triumph which we again proclaim today, now, in this holy night. Despite the refusal of his love by so many, his love became an unstoppable force. Having passed through the infamy of the cross and the coldness of the tomb, he descended among the dead to bring his love even there. And the love story found its happy ending on the joyous Easter morning. He appeared in his risen and glorified flesh and offered his disciples the gift of Peace, peace, the gift of peace. This is why we can cry out, O oh, happy fault. This fault demanded a masterful plan on the part of God. Augustine, great teacher, St. Ambrose declared, the Lord knew that Adam would fall and then be redeemed by Christ. Happy ruin, which has such a beautiful reparation. Elsewhere, the same Ambrose wrote, we who have sinned more have gained more, because your grace of mercy, Lord, makes us more blessed than our absence of fault does. Oh, truly 
necessary sin of Adam, destroyed completely by the death of Christ, or oh, happy fault that earned so great, so glorious a redeemer. Yes, God's covenantal love appears throughout the history, our history now. There is an unbreakable bond between God and humanity. In the risen Lord, our glorious Redeemer, the Father gives us the gift of his love and the gift of rising from our sins and the bonds of death to new life and further to eternal life. This is our hope. Yes, this is the night to proclaim to the whole world. And I invite you to proclaim it with me. He is risen. He is risen. He is risen. He is truly risen. Alleluia. Dear brothers and sisters, let us humbly beseech the Lord our God to bless this water he has created, which will be sprinkled upon us as a memorial of our baptism. May he graciously renew us, that we may remain faithful to the Spirit whom we have received. Lord our God, in your mercy, be present to your people who keep vigil on this most sacred night and for us who recall the wondrous work of our creation and the still greater work of our redemption, graciously bless this water. For you created water to make the fields fruitful and to refresh and cleanse our bodies. You also made water the instrument of your mercy. For through water, you freed your people from slavery and quenched their thirst in the desert. Through water, the prophets proclaimed the new covenant you were to enter upon with the human race. And last of all, through water, which Christ made holy in the Jordan, you have renewed our corrupted nature in the bath of regeneration. Therefore, May this water be for us a memorial of the baptism we have received and grant that we may share in the gladness of our brothers and sisters who in Easter have received their baptism through Christ our Lord. Springs of water.
Dear brothers and sisters, through the Paschal mystery, we have been buried with Christ in baptism so that we may walk with him in newness of life. And so now that our Lenten of Servants is concluded, let us renew the promises of holy baptism by which we once renounced Satan and his works and promised to serve God in the Holy Catholic Church. And I ask you, do you renounce Satan? I do. And all his works? I do. And all his empty show? I do. Do you believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth? I do. Do you believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was born of the Virgin Mary, suffered death and was buried, rose again from the dead, and is seated at the right hand of the Father? I do. Do you believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting? I do. And may Almighty God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has given us new birth by water and the Holy Spirit, and bestowed on us forgiveness of our sins, keep us by his grace in Christ Jesus our Lord for eternal life. Amen.
with the joy of the resurrection renewed in our hearts, we now turn to God and offer our prayers for our needs and those of the whole world. For our Holy Father, Pope Francis, that God will strengthen him to be a faithful servant of the gospel and a voice of peace and hope in the world. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our president, legislators, judges, and all those in service to the common good, that through the gift of heavenly wisdom, they may never tire in their commitment to uphold religious freedom, the sanctity of marriage, and the dignity of all human life from the first moment of conception until natural death. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That many will devote their lives in loving service to the poor, to immigrants and refugees, the marginalized, the sick, and the elderly. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For peace throughout areas of the world torn by war, violence, and oppression, especially in Ukraine, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That the joyful celebration of the resurrection will inspire a deeper faith in the hearts of all God's people, especially those who have entered the church this Easter, and encourage within them a desire to share that faith with others and the perennial mission of the new evangelization. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That many will recognize the gifts God has given them and be open to using those gifts in vocations to the priesthood, diaconate, and consecrated religious life. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the special intentions we hold in our hearts, as well as those enrolled in the National Shrine's Easter Novena, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That our beloved dead who died with Christ in baptism may now share in the glory of the resurrection, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, your son's victory over sin and death has brought new hope and life to all creation. Hear our prayers on this holy night and lead us to share in the fullness of that new life in your eternal kingdom through Christ our Lord. Amen. We invite you to join in support of the ministry of the Basilica of the National Shrine. During the unprecedented days where our ministry has been greatly limited, your contributions are all the more appreciated. Thank you for being as generous as your means allow.
pray, brethren, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Accept, we ask, O Lord, the prayers of your people with the sacrificial offerings that has begun in the Paschal Mysteries, may, by the working of your power, bring us to the healing of eternity through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. With Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation in, at all times to acclaim you, O Lord, but on this night, above all, to load you yet more gloriously when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. For he is the true Lamb who has taken away the sins of the world. By dying, he has destroyed our death, and by rising, restored our life. Therefore, overcome with Paschal joy, every land, Every people exalts in your praise, and even the heavenly powers with the angelic host sing together the uniting hymn of your glory as they acclaim. To you, therefore, most merciful Father, we make humble prayer and petition through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, that you accept and bless these gifts, these offerings, these holy and unblemished sacrifices, which we offer you firstly for your holy Catholic Church. Be pleased to grant her peace, to guard, unite, and govern her throughout the whole world, together with your servant Francis, our Pope, my brother Wilton, the Bishop of this Church, and me, your unworthy servant, and all those who holding to the truth hand on the Catholic and apostolic faith. Remember, Lord, your servants. And all gathered here, whose faith and devotion are known to you. For them, we offer you this sacrifice of praise, or they offer it for themselves and all who are dear to them, for the redemption of their souls, in hope of health and well-being, and paying their homage to you, the eternal God, living and true. Celebrating the most sacred night of the resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ in the flesh, and in communion with those whose memory we venerate, especially the glorious ever Virgin Mary, Mother of our God and Lord Jesus Christ, and blessed Joseph, her spouse, your blessed apostles and martyrs, Peter and Paul, Andrew, James, John, Thomas, James, Philip, Bartholomew, Matthew, Simon and Jude, Linus, Cletus, Clement, Sistus, Cornelius, Cyprian, Lawrence, Chrysogonus, John and Paul, Cosmas and Damian, and all your saints, we ask that through their merits and prayers in all things we may be defended by your protecting help. Therefore, Lord, we pray, graciously accept this oblation of our service, that of your whole family which we make to you, 
also for those to whom you have been pleased to give the new birth of water and the Holy Spirit, granting them forgiveness of all their sins. Order our days in your peace and command that we may be delivered from eternal damnation and counted among the flock of those you have chosen. Be pleased, O oh God, we pray, to bless, acknowledge, and approve this offering in every respect. Make it spiritual and acceptable, so that it may become for us the body and blood of your most beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. On the day before he was to suffer, he took bread in his holy and venerable hands, and with eyes raised to heaven, to you, O God, his almighty Father, giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the, this precious chalice in his holy and venerable hands, and once more giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The Mystery of Faith. Therefore, O oh Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the blessed Passion, the resurrection from the dead, and the glorious ascension into heaven of Christ your Son, our Lord, we, your servants and your holy people, offer to your glorious majesty from the gifts that you have given us, this pure victim, this holy victim, this spotless victim, the holy bread of eternal life and the chalice of everlasting salvation. Be pleased to look upon these offerings with a serene and kindly countenance and to accept them as once you are pleased to accept the gift of your servant Abel the just, the sacrifice of Abraham, our father in faith, and the offering of your high priest Melchizedek, a holy sacrifice, a spotless victim. In humble prayer, we ask you, Almighty God, command that these gifts be born by the hands of your holy angel to your altar on high, in the sight of your divine majesty, so that all of us who, through this participation at the altar, receive the most holy body and blood of your Son, may be filled with every grace and heavenly blessing. Remember also, Lord, your servants, who have gone before us with the sign of faith and rest in the sleep of peace. Grant them, O Lord, we pray, and all who sleep in Christ, a place of refreshment, light, and peace. To us also, your servants, who, though sinners, hope in your abundant mercies, graciously grant some share and fellowship with your holy apostles and martyrs, with John the Baptist, Stephen, Matthias, Barnabas, Ignatius, Alexander, Marcellinus, Peter, Felicity, Perpetua, 
Agatha, Lucy, Agnes, Cecilia, Anastasia, and all your saints. Admit us, we beseech you, into their company, not weighing our merits, but granting us your pardon through Christ our Lord. Through whom you continue to make all these good things, O Lord. You sanctify them, fill them with life, bless them and bestow them upon us. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil, graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you, look not on our sins but on the faith of your Church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord may be with you always. And with your spirit. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not ready.
Let us pray. Pour out on us, O Lord, the spirit of your love, and in your kindness make those you have nourished by this Paschal sacrament one in mind and heart, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Before the final blessing, allow me to express a word of gratitude first to each and every one of you who are here physically present in Mary's shrine. It's great to see the shrine filled once again. We welcome as well those who join us at home through the Eternal Word Television Network and our live stream broadcast. We are so very grateful to Archbishop Christophe Pierre for being with us for all of Holy Week. As Nuncio, the Archbishop is the personal representative of our Holy Father, Pope Francis, to the United States. Archbishop, we are always happy to have you with us here at Mary's Shrine to lead us in prayer. And we thank you for your fine homilies, which always give us cause for reflection. A great word of appreciation is in order for our staff. Our staff here at Mary Shrine for all that they did to ensure that our Holy Week celebrations were prayerful and beautiful. In a very special way, I am thankful to Father Ismail Ayala, our Director of Liturgy, Dr. Pilar Tona, our Director of Music, our Choir, the Sister Servants of Mary Immaculate, and all of our volunteers who help us serve each of you. As we celebrate the resurrection of the Lord this Easter, and may we follow the advice of Pope Francis to listen to the risen Lord as he invites us to begin anew and never lose hope. May Our Lady of Hope, the Immaculate Conception, present all your needs before her risen Son. The Lord be with you. And with his Bow down for the blessing. May Almighty God bless you through today's Easter solemnity and in his compassion defend you from every assault of sin. Amen. Amen. And may he who restores you to eternal life in the resurrection of this only begotten endow you with the price of immortality. Amen. Amen. Now that the day of the Lord's passion have drawn to a close, may you who celebrate the gladness of the Paschal Feast come with Christ's help and exult in his spirit to those feasts that are celebrated in eternal joy. Amen. And may the blessing of Almighty God, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit come down on you and remain with you forever. Amen. Go in peace, alleluia. Alleluia. Thanks be to God. Alleluia. Alleluia.
to you.